to the world, and let it be said also to those down south who believed and argued that the British Army were acting as peacekeepers. The British approach, the approach of the sectarian state, had been anything but peaceful. The oppression of the nationalist people and the growing demand for equality had sparked the rise of the civil rights movement, a movement that was met with fierce repression, the targeting of leaders, the banning of marches, the violent put down of demonstrations, and then the introduction of internment without trial created the charged climate in which the horror of Bloody Sunday unfolded. In little over 10 minutes, on the streets of this beautiful city, they took the lives of 14 innocent civilians. They shot and injured many more. The reels that played out on TV screens are the reels that condemned the British Army in the eyes of the world. Images of people shot as they crawled to the ground for cover, people shot as they ran for safety, people shot as they put their hands up and shouted, don't shoot, don't shoot. People shot in the back as they tried to protect others. People shot at close range as they lay helplessly on the ground. People shot in the chest as their father desperately tried to reach them. 17 year olds shot and dying, and a priest waving a white handkerchief to get them to stop. Just stop. 10 minutes of frenzy when the bullets came like hail, when the unimaginable became real on the familiar streets of home. A real that could not be unwound, that could not be taken back. A reel of agony, loss and heartache that would play again and again in the convulsions of colonial conflict in the years that followed. A reel that has flickered through the lives of the families, their children, their grandchildren. Friends, we're here in the Guild Hall tonight to remember. And remembrance is powerful and empowering. It's an act of strength. We remember not to recall shadows, but to illuminate the past, to light the future, to illuminate and light a world of human rights and equality for everyone. There are no full stops or cul-de-sacs to remembrance. Remembrance is continuous, it rolls on like a river, sometimes gentle as a babbling brook, sometimes raw, rushing and fast as white waters, but always moving. We remember to commemorate those taken from us, to stand in our truth, to press for a better tomorrow. Bloody Sunday evokes pain and loss, but thanks to the resilience of the families and of this community, we can speak too of the triumph of the human spirit and of the victory of love over incredible adversity. When the darkness gathered, the light of Derry shone even brighter still. The late great African-American poet Lucille Clifton wrote, They ask me to remember, but they want me to remember their memories, and I keep on remembering mine. Clifton's words provide a critique of how the powerful often attempt to seal the past from the powerless, how the powerful try to steal experiences, steal memory from those who have suffered. That's what successive British governments tried to do for decades. That's what the current Tory government intends with its disgraceful legacy and amnesty legislation. The British government's attempt to substitute the truth for a so-called official narrative to whitewash Britain's dirty war and to evade justice has no support in Ireland and this disgraceful legislation must be brought to a stop. Prime Minister Sunak should remember that the powerful have never stopped the bloody Sunday families remembering the truth. 
They haven't stopped the Bala Murphy families from remembering the truth either. They didn't stop the Macaneski family who we salute this evening. For 50 years, the people have stood in the breach and stopped the powerful from stealing their memories, stopped them from rewriting the past, and that will never ever change. We hold tight to our experience, to our memory of what happened, and we also create space for the experiences, the hurt, and the memory of others who suffered. The tears, pain, grief of conflict make no distinction between tradition, allegiance, or church. The past is a contested space, but it's also a space that we share. So in acknowledging the hurt that was done to others, in embracing their memory, we open the path to a better tomorrow. I wonder now if we write a letter to those lost on bloody Sunday, what do we say? Our letter to bridge the years between then and now. Maybe we write this. My love, my boy, my son, my father, my husband. It still aches that your life was cut short, that a bullet stole all your tomorrows. You are loved and missed. You have never been forgotten. We, your family, your community, never took a backward step in the fight for justice. We have not let you down. The Ireland you were taken from has been transformed. An agreement signed 25 years ago changed the future. We've had a quarter of a century of peace. We've a distance yet to travel. There's no agreement that can change the past, but this is a healing time, a time to reconcile, to extend ourselves, to lift each other up. Derry is transformed too. The army is no longer installed by the old gas guard wall. The guns are gone, the war is over. That couldn't have happened without John, without Martin, two of Derry's greatest sons who believed in the power of a handshake. You wouldn't know the place now, and I only wish you could be here to see it. It would make you so happy. Thirty years ago, a British Prime Minister finally said, sorry, finally acknowledged your innocence to the world. The apology means a lot, but we still push for justice, and we always will. For five decades, your name has been linked with the fight for that justice. Your memory, a beacon of hope for the future. That is how we remember you. You make us proud. I wonder if we were to write to generations to come, what would we tell them of our time here, the short time that we're given in this life, on this beautiful island, our haven, our shelter, our home, our Ireland. What will we tell them of the decisions that we make, of the paths that we chose? Well, we are, of course, still writing that chapter, but I hope that we will write this. My beloved, we have not yet met. I get to see your face, but I want you to know that we did everything for your bright future. We refused to be defined by the past. We pushed the boundaries. We rejected the idea of thus far and no further. We surpassed expectations. And when we failed or when we fell short, and we did, we listened, we challenged ourselves, we reimagined, and then we tried again. When there was any attempt to drag us backwards, we pressed forward. We chose courage and hope. We chose trust. We chose belief. We said sorry and we meant it. We made friends. We built this new Ireland free of discrimination. An Ireland of equality. Your home. A home for all. 
Lucky Sunday will always be with us. It's interwoven in the fabric of our collective story. Patrick Doherty, John Duddy, Hugh Gilmore, Michael Kelly, Michael McDade, Kevin McElhenney, Barney McGuigan, Jared McKinney, William McKinney, William Nash, James Ray, John Young, John Johnson, Jared Donaghy. We carry these names with us as we work to build the Irish nation anew. And we can't reach our destiny as a people divided, a people separated for too long. The tomorrow that we can shape together is far greater than anything that divides us. So our challenge is to tear down the walls of yesterday, to really see each other, to respect the integrity of each position, to refuse to fight the battles of yesterday. That is another place and those days are gone. A new Ireland is now within touching distance and we must reach with confidence and hope for tomorrow. We're called on again to stretch ourselves, to push the boundaries, to exceed expectations, to once again extend the hand of friendship, partnership and inclusion, to defeat poverty, isolation and alienation together. Tonight we remember those lost on Bloody Sunday. Tonight we look to the future. We think about all that we have to gain. The ending of division, the uniting of all our people, the building of our nation in friendship and respect. Because deep in our hearts, we still believe that we shall overcome, that we'll walk hand in hand, that we will rise above, that the truth will set us free. We can get there together, we will get there together, and we will see the dawning of a new day for everyone who calls Ireland home.